<clears throat> oh man, I really hate being on YouTube. But this is a cool project that we've been working on. So I figure I ought to share some stuff about it. I don't know, I fucking hate intros. Anybody who watches this channel knows that. So I guess that was the intro. So this is a project that we've been working on the past couple months. It is a replica of a Lotus 7. Uh, the original kit was made by a company called Brunton, and this was the model that they called the Stalker V6. So it, it came to us with uh, basically a lot of Chevy S10 truck running gear, um, engine, trans, differential, rear axle, um, even the front uh, knuckles and calipers are all S10 hardware. And the owner ran it that way on the track for a couple of years. And we've been helping him take care of it in between track days and in the off season, you know, doing maintenance and repairs. These things always need a good check of bolts and fluids and all that stuff. It's not, uh, it's not your average street car that you can just, you know, change the fluids and run it every year. Always needs a little bit. So he brought it to us this year and he wanted to upgrade the powertrain. So what it had in there before was a 3.4 liter V6, uh, which was converted to be carbureted. Uh, it was originally from a, I think like 90s Camaro. And then it had a Chevy S10 transmission in it. And that powertrain combination is kind of a bizarre setup. Uh, for a lightweight vehicle, you know, it was very torquey, uh, engine didn't rev very high, the transmission was a five-speed, which was fine, but it was very clunky and just wasn't really made for, um, you know, quick shifts out on the track. He brought it to us and wanted to do an upgrade on the drivetrain, and what we decided to go with is a K24A2. This is out of a 2006 Acura TSX. It's a very common swap in a lot of Hondas and honestly a lot of other vehicles. It's becoming a, a more and more common uh, powertrain to swap in. So on this, there is no specific kit really that we could go off of. Uh, so we had to do a lot of it on our own here. So in order to get a K24, into this chassis. We had to do a couple of modifications. Uh, the common one that's done on a lot of K-series swaps is we converted it over the throttle body to an RSX throttle body, which is cable driven. See there, we made a custom bracket to run the cable using the same pedal and setup that he had um, running the V6 that was in here before. So that worked out pretty nicely. A little bit of modification to get the throttle cable to work properly. Um, but this engine originally came as a drive-by wire in the TSX. So that conversion is very straightforward. There's an adapter plate that are, that's readily available. And the transmission, you can just barely see under here, is a six-speed from a Mazda Miata, uh, NB, uh, early 2000s Mazda Miata. Then we've got, you can see in here, the adapter plate to mate the transmission to the engine. That's made by K-Power Industries, the K-Miata guys. Also, we're using some engine mounts that they provide, which bolt right up to the block, which it's their universal kit. This is also K-Power Industries. It's a universal kit that allows you to bolt up to the block. Um, and then from that side, we made our own bracket here that supports up to it. So on each side, it made it really easy. We only had to fabricate the chassis side. The engine side just bolts right up. Same thing on this side. This one's a little easier to see. As you can see, where this part here, we fabricated to match 
up with what they had provided there. And then it's just using the normal Miata slave cylinder. We ran our own hard line for that. The exhaust. This is actually a OEM RSX Type S header, which has this kind of angle built into it, which was kind of a guess, and we threw it on here, and it actually worked out really well. And then we custom fabricated the rest of the exhaust. It does have three mufflers all kind of crammed in here. It's still pretty loud, but one of the tracks we're going to does have sound limitations, so we're a little nervous about that, so we crammed in three mufflers into that one section. And up here we've got the battery, little lightweight lithium battery, and then the Honda ECU, custom relay setups, and fuse box. So we ended up having to do pretty much all of this from scratch. Uh, there was there was some wiring in it before, but being a carbureted setup, it really didn't have a whole lot. Um, so we've actually got this thing pretty automated now. Uh, even the radiator fan, all that is controlled now by the ECU. Just one less thing for the driver to have to worry about. So we've got all that stuff wired up. Just an adjustable fuel pressure regulator. Again, this is something that we had to add in because the previous engine was carbureted, so didn't really have much in the way of a fuel system. So we upgraded the pump to a high pressure pump. Add the regulator, of course the ECU, all that. And then we set up his dash here. So the dashboard had a lot of changes for this build. Before it was all mechanical gauges, very basic stuff. Um, again, you know, running a powertrain that didn't have an ECU or really any kind of electronics. You know, it was a whole just cl uh, cluster of, like I said, mechanical gauges. And now going to fuel injection and with the Honda to ECU, we have a lot more option as far as sensors and data. So we redid his dashboard here. Got his kill switch set up. Digital instrument cluster. We got warning lights here, they're really bright. We got warning lights for oil pressure and check engine light. Then we got the dashboard and it collects data over CAN and GPS. So we'll be able to do lap timing, vehicle speed, all of that over GPS. And then it reads parameters from the engine ECU directly over CAN so we can get um, air fuel ratio, battery voltage, basically any sensor on the engine, um, throttle position, coolant temp, anything that you could really need, anything that the ECU can read, we can get here on the dash. And this is a big upgrade over what he had before. So. The Miata transmission actually fit in here really nicely. We didn't have to use any linkages or extensions for the transmission on the shifter. It comes right up through the, tr the tunnel here. Really nice, it's completely stock Miata shifter. Be a big improvement as before the shift linkage was way up under there. And so the shifter kind of sat a little further back out here and it had all kinds of linkages and it was just a really sloppy setup. So this is much more direct right into the transmission. That'll be a huge upgrade for him out on the track. We got a view of the underside. We got the K-Series engine, Miata transmission, six speed, custom aluminum drive shaft to mate the Miata transmission up to the Chevy seven and a half inch rear end.